So in this video, I'm going to explain how the Dow Jones Industrial Average is calculated and how it's different than the S&P 500 index. So here I have an example of uh, a very small Dow index with only five stocks. And it's very simple on how the Dow is calculated. So what we do is we take the, the five different stocks and we simply just find the sum of those stocks. So here I'm just using the sum formula in Excel to add up the five stocks together to get one total number. Now this number is then divided by the Dow Jones Industrial Average Divisor. And the divisor is something that the Dow Jones Industrial Average produces and calculates. So you don't have to figure this out. It would be given to you um, or if you're somebody calculating the actual Dow, you would just look up what the current divisor is. And it's a way that they manipulate the divisor to help if a new co company comes in, replaces an old company, if a stock splits, to keep the index consistent. I'm sorry, the average consistent. This is Now, that's just one example. Now, if I do another example over here, this is, you know, I have um, seven companies in this example. And again, if it was seven or 30 companies, you just add all of the companies together and you get a, a sum. And you simply just divide. I'm just going to divide by the current divisor here. We're here stating it. So, the, so this Dow Jones average would be 2101 and this would be 1334. Now, this is not the best representation of wealth created or destroyed. So for example, if, if this stock went up a dollar, we create about, let's see, go from 30, uh, 1334 to 1341. But say that this company only has one share outstanding, so it only really created $1 worth of wealth. Now what if we take a Johnson & Johnson and we say it has a billion shares outstanding, we raise that by a dollar and a billion new, you know, one dollar increase in Johnson & Johnson creates a billion dollars of new stock wealth and, but it still only raises the divisor to 41 just like uh, the first stock we looked at. But if this stock only has one share outstanding, it's only going to increase the total wealth of the stock market by one dollar if it goes up by a dollar. Uh, so you can see how that e any of these stocks that go up by a dollar are going to have the same effect on the, 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 right, the increase of the Dow. But it's not representative of the actual wealth being created. That's why the Dow Jones Industrial Average is not the best um, way to look at the stock market. And the true Dow Jones only measures 30 stocks. So very small, um, shows a very small segment of the market. That's why most educated investors will work with the S&P 500. So the S&P 500 is an index and it's a little bit more ca uh, complicated to calculate. So the formula in the S&P 500 is the sum of the current market divided by the sum of the base market and then multiplied by 10. So here we have the base prices. So these are the prices from when the stocks actually entered the S&P 500 index dating back to about 1941. And they're very they're quite small because of stock splits uh, have lowered the base price over time and we're going to compare that to the current price the price that the stocks trading at today and we're also going to use the ref we're also going to reflect on the current outstanding share so some stocks may have a lot of outstanding shares and stops some stocks may have a little bit of outstanding shares so that's really going to be uh, a factor in this so first we have to calculate the uh, base, uh, we're going to calculate the, the base market value, the base market value here. So it's simply just taking the base price and multiplying it by the outstanding shares. And if I, in Excel, if I just drag this box down here, I'll calculate all of them. And again, down here is just, we're just calculating a sum. So I should just label this sum or maybe total okay so and you can also it's also designated by the two accounting lines here so here if I just delete this I'm just going to uh, put in the sum 
and the range to calculate the sum of the base market value. Now I have to do the current market. And again, I'm gonna take the current price this time and multiply it by the outstanding shares to get the current market value. And I'm just gonna pull this down. And again, I'm gonna find the sum of that. Okay, so now I have the sum of the current market and the sum of the base market. And I have to divide the two. So here I'm just going to take the sum of the current market and divide by the sum of the base market. Okay, so I get a um, 30.83, but that's not the index. I have to multiply it by a factor of 10 to get the actual index. by 10 okay so then that would equal uh, 3034 and the reason that they have it's just sort of how the when the index was created it was rather small so they want to magnify it by making it a factor of 10 that's all that the reason this times 10 is in there just to make it uh, have a bigger number when it focus when it first started out it was quite small so again to do to do another example um, here's different stocks and different prices uh, the base market has already been calculated, so I'm going to calculate the current market. And if I pull this little, wait for a uh, black plus, I can pull that down and it just copies the formula down. And again, I'm going to find the sum. And then I'm going to divide the current by the base and then multiply it by a factor of 10. Okay. Now, so if you know so we have a stock here that's ten thousand and a stock here that's one thousand so if this goes up by a dollar we could see that it raises up the actually i did the wrong thing i want to raise the current so the current market goes up by a dollar and we go from we go to 14 114.70 and that was from 114.59 so very little effect because there's not a lot of outstanding shares now, if we take this stock, we go up by a dollar on this stock. We see that goes to 115, a bigger jump, because there's more outstanding shares. So say that, let's just increase these outstanding shares. Okay, so say we had, if we increase the outstanding shares, we'd have a, um, an S&P 500 index average uh, of 154.09. So if this went up a dollar, this would go up about almost three dollars. If this goes up a dollar, it barely moves at all. And that's why it's representation of the wealth created. This stock going up a dollar does not create much wealth. It creates a thousand dollars. And this stock going up a dollar creates a, creates a hundred thousand dollars of new wealth. A hundred million dollars of new wealth. So you can see that this is S&P 500 index or indexes in general are a better representation of the market that they're representing because it takes in the base value and gives you actual, reflects the actual wealth created. So you have a better uh, idea of how much the market's gone up or gone down. And that's why I think when you see the S&P 500, it doesn't move, it's not as volatile as the Dow. And one of the reasons is because of this, you know, indexing of 500 stocks. Okay, so that's the, the, the video explanation for this handout, and I look forward to talking to you during the next handout.